first step would be starting your vehicle in a well-ventilated area. You want to bring your vehicle to operating temperature to get all the contaminants flowing throughout the system. The next step will be waiting until the engine cools off a bit. You never want to open your radiator cap when the fluid is at operating temperature as it's under pressure. We've let this cool for about 15 minutes. The cap is cool to touch and it's safe to remove at this time. The next step will be locating the petcock or drain plug on the bottom of your radiator. On my 1996 Ford Bronco, it is located on the passenger side of the vehicle, back side of the radiator. You'll want to unscrew that counterclockwise. It will remain in the radiator as it has two plastic clips. It's sealed up with an O-ring. Be careful because the antifreeze will slosh out in all directions. So make sure you have a large catch pan underneath to catch all the antifreeze. It is toxic to animals and you should dispose of it properly. I was able to find an old funnel and squeeze it underneath the petcock. Hopefully that will catch the majority of the antifreeze into my catch pan below. All right, let's remove the petcock. The funnel is doing a good job of catching the antifreeze. Okay, it looks like the radiator is emptied. All the old coolant is out. Again, you want to dispose of this properly. I'm going to reinstall the petcock or drain plug. I'm then going to pour the Prestone flush and clean solution into the radiator, followed by distilled water. And then I'm going to run the engine up to operating temperature and let the flush and clean solution do its job, loosening and removing scale inside the motor and cooling system. Now we'll add the Prestone flush and cleaner to our radiator. Now it's time to add the distilled water to the radiator. Fill the radiator up completely, then start the vehicle and allow the system to burp out any air bubbles, then continue filling the radiator. Again, we're going to keep adding distilled water until the radiator is full. Okay, now we're gonna replace the cap and allow the engine to reach operating temperature and let the Prestone flush and clean do its job. Make sure you have the fan on high, the temperature on hot, and the vents on. Okay, we've let the engine reach its operating temperature. Right now we're gonna let it sit for about 15 minutes to make sure we can open up the radiator cap safely. We've waited for the engine to cool off. The radiator cap is almost cool to touch, so I feel it's safe to remove it. Remember, you don't wanna open it hot. It is under pressure. The coolant will spray up, scald, and burn you, as well as get all over the inside of your engine compartment. This one is good to go. The next thing we're gonna do is get under the vehicle, drain out all the distilled water and the Prestone flush and cleaner, and see what comes out of this cooling system. We're gonna start with a clean pan again to get a good idea of what that solution cleaned out of our cooling system. All right, let's get this drain plug removed again. And it looks like my funnel is doing the job collecting most of the old coolant. Let's take a look under the truck. Bottle number one was simply me draining the radiator. Bottle number two was after we added the Prestone flush and cleaner. It's still a little cloudy. I'm gonna actually flush it one more time using straight distilled water. I've got six samples in front of you. Sample number one represents us warming up the truck and draining the radiator. Sample number two is when we added the Prestone flush and clean solution. Sample number three, was simply adding distilled water and flushing the system, as well as number four and number five. Number six represents the coolant we put in at the very end. Now we're gonna use the antifreeze that's pre-mixed and fill up our cooling system. Please remember when you're doing the final fill on your radiator, you can turn this container sideways and eliminate any type of spills. When you think you've got the radiator filled to the top, go ahead and start the ignition. This will allow you to burp the system of any air trapped throughout your cooling system and you'll be able to add more fluid. You'll be able to see the fluid fluctuate and as air bubbles come up, the fluid level should go down. This is the perfect example of your system burping out air and allowing more coolant to enter the system. After all the coolant was added and the system was burped of any air pockets, we checked for leaks. We didn't find any and this truck is good to go. I hope you found the video as informative as I did. From what we started with to what we ended up with, I think we made fantastic progress with our cooling system. 
we did four additional flushes after the drain. The first one was the only one we used the Prestone flush and cleaner solution. The rest was distilled water. You always want to use distilled water. If you don't have that much available to you, use tap water. Just make sure your final flush is with distilled water. You don't want any minerals or foreign substances in your cooling system. This one right here is the 50-50 solution that we added when we were all done. Please dispose of the used coolant properly. It's poisonous to animals and pets. Don't pour it down the drain. Don't pour it on your grass. Don't keep it laying around. It's pretty dangerous stuff. It's toxic. If you have any questions or concerns, please put them in the comments section below. I look forward to answering them. If you are happy with the video, please like and subscribe, and I look forward to making more in the future. Thanks again.